Well, it's the last thing we're ever filming in this room. Uh, sad to see it go, but happy to watch it leave. We, we said it would be unceremonious, but uh, might as well. We got a gift from uh, another employee, so might as well kick things off with a bang. R.I.P. this room. Although, I guess on the viewer end, you won't notice any difference. Probably won't, won't change much. Maybe put some new fan art up or something, but... Yeah. Uh, anyways, this is uh, the last news dump from this room, but it's on internet today anyway, so... Who cares? Who gives a shit? Yeah, so we shit on the DC film universe quite a bit here. You know. Yeah. But it's important. <laughs> You know how we are. <laughs> but it's important to remember that before DC started mucking it up with a big, uneven, rushed, and overall not great superhero universe, Sony was on the verge of doing basically the same thing with their Spider-Man properties. I'm not sure it was even on the verge. I, I always go back to the fact that they introduced two villains at the end of the Andrew oh, Garfield Spider-Man thing. Oh baby, here comes the Sinister Six movie. Yeah. <laughs> hey look, it's Rhino or whatever the fuck. Then, then nothing happened. Yeah, so they, yeah, they were kind of uh, the DC before DC, yeah. before Disney came through and saved Sony from itself with a big lucrative deal that let Spy TV and the MCU movies, and it let Sony make money off of it. You you can kind of thank North Korea for that. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Am I blowing your mind right now? Mm. So, uh, oh. Before all that though, uh, Sony had some insane plans for an entire cinematic universe just based around Spider-Man with standalone movies devoted to characters that the average person has never even heard of. But of course, the Disney deal merely delayed their plans and we've got a standalone Venom movie with no Spider-Man in it coming this October. Will it be good? That's anyone's guess. At least it's got Tom Hardy, okay? Other Sony superhero movies in development right now include Silver and Black, about the anti-hero characters Sil Silver Sable and Black Cat, and Nightwatch, a guy who, thanks to time travel or something, discovers a suit of armor worn by his own corpse and goes on to fight crime with it. Woo! Again, either of these, they could turn out to be great, but just to keep, you know, keep in mind that all of this is an extension of the so-so Amazing Spider-Man series and the people behind it. These plans date back to long before Marvel came to the rescue. Yeah, so anyway, the latest news out of Sony's Spider-Man Cinematic Universe, which happens to not actually feature Spider-Man all that much, is uh, the somewhat confusing news that Jared Leto is in talks to play Morbius in a standalone movie about that character. Now, we all know who Morbius is, right? Of course, he's that clown that got dipped in uh, the chemicals over at Ace Chemicals and then came to be a gangster. That's the Joker. Fuck, who's Morbius? Uh, I believe he's the guy that teaches Neo Kung Fu. No, that's Morpheus. Hmm. Okay, maybe we don't know who Morbius is. Okay. But apparently, he's yet another anti-hero character from the Spider-Man comics. Uh, he's a scientist who, during a failed experiment, and they're all failed experiments when you're a scientist in the Marvel yeah. Universe, during a failed experiment, he accidentally turns himself into a vampire. Oh. Whoops. Well, that'll be good for Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, so he starts out as a villain, and then he fights Spider-Man a bunch, and then he turns sort of good choosing to quench his thirst for blood by going after the bad guys. So basically, Vampire Dexter. Hmm. Again, it's a concept that could very well make for a great movie. Marvel's more horror supernatural properties like Blade and Ghost Rider, uh, they haven't really gotten the modern day superhero movie treatment that they deserve, so this could be a good thing. Maybe. What's extra weird here though is that, whatever. It's also weird that Sony execs would watch a giant turd like Suicide Squad and say, that's the guy we need for our superhero franchise. We need someone who's actually evil. Yeah. I just, it's I just strange. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, yeah. in, <laughs> in other news, we mention a lot how HBO's Vice Principles is one of the greatest works of comedy ever made, and allow us to tell you again that you absolutely need to go watch Vice Principles, and also Eastbound and Down if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, the team behind those shows, Danny McBride and Jody Hill, they have yet another HBO show in the pipeline, and this one sounds just as likely to be great as their previous work. It's called Righteous Gemstones, and it stars both Danny McBride and Jod Goodman Ooh. as a pair of father and son televangelists who, uh, surprise, are devious, greedy, and fiercely competitive outside of the Christian spotlight. Huh? Danny McBride is taking on the insane task of writing, executive producing, directing, and starring in this, along with producing help from his Eastbound and Vice Principals pals Jody Hill and David Gordon Green. Now, to be clear though, this is just a pilot, and it might never see the light of day or it might end up drastically changed if it does get picked up. That was not the case with Vice Principals, where McBride was able to convince HBO to let him film the entire two season series at once, just based off a script, which is totally unheard of. Seriously, go watch Vice Principals. It's incredible. What are it you is, doing? It is the perfect show. Yeah. And the perfect length. Yeah. I just, I love it. I miss it so much. But also, speaking of Danny McBride, uh, here's 
our first trailer of the week, a Netflix movie called The Legacy of a White-Tailed Deer Hunter, which stars Josh Brolin as a famous hunter and divorced dad who takes his young son on a hunting trip to bond with him, but finds that his son doesn't really give a shit about hunting, and they don't really relate to each other at all. Mm. Uh, Danny McBride plays his friend, who comes along to film the whole trip for Josh Brolin's hunting show. Uh, so this was written by McBride and directed by Eastbound Down and Vice Principal's director Jody Hill, so it should be great! Oh, um. well, actually, according to all the early Rotten Tomatoes reviews, it is not great. Mm. So that sucks. Yeah. Uh, in any case, Comes out on Netflix on Friday, so it won't cost you anything to take a look. Anything extra, at least. Netflix, not really knocking it out of the park recently. Their docu-series are great. Yes, their documentaries are good. Uh, yeah. The original their, programming? Uh, the original movies, especially. Yeah. Their, their shows, their series, a mixed bag. Their movies, pretty much, seeing that Netflix logo on a movie now pretty much means we shot this, we filmed it, we screened it at festivals, literally no one wanted it, and Netflix gave us bargain bin prices there you go. to put it on their platform. I mean, I just like finally went back to Hulu after years of not touching it, and it's great. Yeah, they, they're adding movies and shit all the time. Yeah. I might like, seriously think about canceling Netflix. And The Handmaid's Tale is probably my favorite show on TV right now. Now in TV trailers, The Purge is a franchise that just won't quit. So it's no surprise at all that it's getting a TV show spinoff to go even deeper into that alternate universe where once a year all crime is, is legal and people can go around killing each other with impunity. They never focus on the fun crimes. Yeah. Which is sad. Yeah, it's just murder. Look, we, we gotta look at, I wanna, if the TV show is, is picked up for more than one season, we gotta turn to petty crime. Yeah, I wanna, why don't they go down to like the local bar where like the clock turns 2 p.m. and they're like... 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Two yeah. and they're like... <laughs> Hey, you I'm know what? Keep on serving. People are jaywalking all over the place. <laughs> it's great. Now, if you're if you're curious how uh, the purge is going to translate into a TV show, the entire season will take place within a 12-hour period of time during the purge, and will follow a set of characters who also have flashbacks to simpler non-purge parts of the year. Uh, the purge premieres uh, this September on both USA and Sci-Fi, though the rest of the series will live on Sci-Fi. Where I think will... it'll live on USA. I don't, I don't know. Either way, Sci-Fi will cancel it, and people will actually love it after the fact. That's how it works. Yeah. And then they'll be like, Amazon, pick Sa us up. Save us. Uh, also in television, though this time in television that we're probably not gonna have easy legal access to here in the States is Wellington Paranormal, a New Zealand mockumentary series from the makers of What We Do in the Shadows, a movie that we also cannot recommend enough. Yeah. Uh, so that was a mockumentary about vampires living in Wellington and now Wellington Paranormal takes that same basic concept and world and takes the perspective of the local police who have to constantly go out and deal with paranormal phenomena. And this actually comes out July 11th, so soon. But again, probably gonna be hard to find outside of New Zealand, which sucks. Yeah. But I'm winking at you. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, though, there's actually also an uh, American What We Do in the Shadows TV show being developed by FX with a premiere sometime next spring. So that's pretty cool. But knowing FX, they'll put out a bunch of uh, work based around the pilot that will never air. And people will be like, why? It looked great. Just like with Spider-Man from Donald Glover. Yeah. Well, TV studios, they're just so predictable these days. They are. But next in trailers, Nicolas Cage's filmography has mostly consisted of cash grab garbage for the last few years, possibly because he owes a lot of money and back taxes Almost to the IRS. Almost definitely. But every once in a while, he takes on something that looks like it could be interesting and actually good. And that's definitely what Mandy, his next movie, looks like. First off, this movie looks trippy as fuck. The colors and effects and costumes are straight out of a really bad acid trip, and this also looks to be violent as hell. There's even a chainsaw fight in the trailer, so that's cool. The premise for Mandy is apparently that Nicolas Cage's wife gets murdered by a cult, causing him to go on a blood-soaked rampage in revenge. Also, he's a lumberjack. So it's like uh, John Wick, but a lumberjack. And his buddy Babe the Big Blue Ox goes on adventures with him. John Wood. <laughs> John my Wood. name's John Wood and I cut wood. And this is my ox, Babe, and he's gonna rip out your intestines with his big old horns. Uh, apparently at one point he forges a sword that looks like the ones that the Klingons use in Star Trek, so Scott Mance will be happy. <laughs> Earlier reviews for Mandy were extremely positive, with people saying that this is Nicholas Cage's performance of a lifetime. So the One True God subreddit is finally gonna get the Nicholas Cage they deserve. Good for them. Yeah, it's definitely worth a look at least when it comes out in September. Yeah, it's the guy that made uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow, which I never oh, yeah. saw, but... Well, uh, <laughs> is, is this a movie pass production? I don't think so. Okay, good. Whew! Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, I gotta look that up. <laughs> also in trailers, we got a new full trailer for The Predator, the latest in a film series that also features Predator and Predators. Mm -hmm. 
It's not confusing. No. Aside from the first one, 1987's Predator, this franchise has been mostly trash. But uh, this one has Shane Black writing and directing it, which boosts our confidence in this movie a bit, since he's actually made some great movies like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and The Nice Guys. Uh, but yeah, based on this latest trailer, it's at least gonna feature the sort of hard R action movie with a hint of comedy vibe that we used to see a lot more in the 80s and early 90s, which is good. Yeah. I miss that stuff. The cast here is also pretty great. You got Boyd Holbrook, Olivia Munn, Keegan Michael Key, Thomas Jane, Sterling K. Brown, and uh, Jacob Tremblay. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I hope he lives. Anyway, there's uh, still a while to go before this comes out in September, so expect. Plenty more marketing between now and then. Probably a bunch of Comic-Con stuff. Uh, the m official movie poster is fucking badass. Yeah. It is straight up like yeah. an 80s, like yeah. almost like a horror movie. Holding like the skull. Well, the illustrated one. Yeah, it's great. That that tr that poster alone did more than the trailer for me to be like, okay, cool, I'm in. Yeah. I mean, if this movie goes like full 80s, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm at least on board to see it. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's news dump. That's from, news dump. From the, last, the last news dump from the small room we've been shooting in. We're gonna for... keep the brick wall though, so don't worry. Gonna... We know that you guys don't like change. We heard it when we even changed the, which is bumped down to negative 40 decibels in Premiere music bed. So maybe we'll keep the brick wall with some new art on it. Yeah. But uh, thanks for joining us this whole time. Uh, since you're already here on Internet Today, the channel, uh, watch our other videos, including Weekly Weird News. And look forward to next Sunday when we have a new episode of Idiots Watching Anime. Yeah about Attack on Titan. And if you join our Patreon, you can watch it early. Yeah! I'm gonna put it up uh, late next week, before Sunday, yeah. on Patreon. So thanks for being a patron.